Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's Girl Fanny Longo back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. Today, we're going to be reacting to why anti Semitism is Islamically impossible. Um, I'm sure most of us or some of us know what this means. It's holding uh, a certain belief against a specific um, a specific group and in this case that would be the Jews. So I don't know what the video is about so without assuming let's jump straight into the video. Historical to suggest that when the Muslims are in charge that they demonize and ostracize and alienate and are unjust towards Jewish people. That we will never accept. Bernard Lewis, who is an Orientalist against, against the Muslims, really. He's an Orientalist. He even admits that the kind of catastrophes that we saw in Europe from the pogroms and the Holocaust and the Spanish Inquisition in 1492, there is no equivalent of that in the Muslim world. There is no equivalent in that. You know why? Because the Muslims did have respect and give it to the Jewish people. Some people, they say, what about the jizya? The jizya under all schools of thought is even less payment than the zakat. But many people don't know that. What is the discriminatory tax you're talking about? It's not a discriminatory tax when it's less than the tax that the Muslims have to pay. And so these fallacies and misnomers and misconceptions about Muslim Jewish living is false <coughs> and we say in fact that of the two Abrahamic religions that are probably most close to one another in terms of theology especially as it relates to God Islam and Judaism are very very close we believe in Moses we believe in Dawood, David we believe in Solomon we believe in all of those prophets we believe in all of them and we respect them and we love them and in fact we cannot even be Muslims without them and so therefore there shouldn't be this kind of friction between Jewish people and Zionists and sorry <laughs> Jewish people and, and Muslims let me tell you something some of these individuals say the following they say Muslims are close you need to keep it closer bro some people say yes, some people say that Muslims are anti-semitic and I say to them how is it possible that Muslims can be anti-Semitic when one of the wives of the Prophet Sophia bin Tuhayyay was a Jew? She was Jewish from a Jewish lineage of Aaron. There's no doubt about that. And in fact, in one occasion, she was being abused by some of the other wives of the Prophet because of her Jewishness. And the Prophet stuck up for her, telling her to reference her lineage as a point of honor. Tell them that your uncle is Aaron, who is a prophet, he said. Anti-Semitism is impossible for Muslims, because to be anti-Semitic, we would have to attack one of our mothers, the mothers of the believers, who is Safiya bin Tuhayyay. In fact, more than this, they'd have to attack one of our prophets, who is Moses. How can you be anti-Semitic? How could you not like, how could you hate Jewish people based on their Jewishness, based on their ethnicity? How can you do that when our prophets came from a Jewish lineage? It's not possible. Remember, Judaism is an ethno-religious construct. It's an ethnicity as well as a religion. So we say this. We say the attempts of the mainstream media and the propagandists, the Zionist propagandists, to try and conflate Zionism with anti-Semitism is only dangerous for them. Because you are opening the door to more serious crimes of anti-Semitism to be open and you're not going to be able to close that door. It reminds me when you make a mockery out of rape and you say rape is and you define it in such a ridiculous way, any kind of sexual thing. Then when the real rape happens, then you are trivializing the plight of the rape, the victim. Same thing here. When the real anti-Semitism happens, you will be trivializing the plight of the Jewish people in their communities who are in fact being attacked as a result of their ethnicity and because of what religion they decide to follow. 
when you say that anti-Semitism is equivalent to, or anti-Israelism, anti-Zionism is equivalent to anti-Semitism. We cannot accept that discourse. And in fact, doing so will alienate the voices of people like this behind me. Brave and gallant people. Brave and gallant people that have stood up for truth. One of the things that one of the rabbis said, one of the rabbis said, he said that, very interestingly, it's his perspective and his interpretation of the Torah. He said that we are in an exile, he said, and us trying to establish the state in 1948, we are trying to defy the exile of God. And what's really interesting is that there is a verse in the Quran. There is actually a verse in the Quran to that effect. Now, some people say this is referring to the state of Israel. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you do good, then that will be for yourself. And if you do bad, then that will be for it. But when the second time comes, and this is very interesting, when they come into the masjid, and what masjid is it referring to here? Masjid al-Aqsa. When they come into the masjid for the second time, and those who are arrogant there will be humiliated. And they will go into the masjid and they will destroy that which has happened before. Some scholars say this is talking about the present state of Israel and that there will be a conquest whether they like it or not. And that is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now some will say, well, we don't know if that's what it's talking about. But there is a hadith that the last on the last days there will be people who will be ala aknaf masjid al-Aqsa, literally on the periphery of the Jerusalem mosque, and that they will be a ta'if al-Mansura, the true sect. We talk about sects here in Islam, like divisions and groups and whatever. There's only one one, true sect, and they will be the ones who will eventually liberate the Masjid al-Aqsa from the occupation. And this is the reality of the situation. So we are aligned in those meanings and on those interpretations. And we say today to our Jewish visitors and our Jewish friends, companions, that we truly respect what you are doing. You truly are a great representation of justice and truth. And now, by doing what you're doing, I promise you, when our youth walk in the streets and see you in, in, in your attire, they won't be thinking these are the people that attack and that celebrate the deaths of our children. They will, they will think twice before that happens and they'll think to themselves, actually, these guys could be very well the ones who supported us in our time of need. They will be thinking, these are the ones who support the Palestinians, who condemn the killing of 66 innocent people by the brutal regime. And that, believe me, is better than any propaganda that any Zionist can do. So, what I want to say is this. What I want to say one more thing, ladies and gentlemen. Today I was meant to have a discussion with you, a quick talk. And what I wanted to say to you is this. There is a hadith. Because the question is, why is this happening? Why is this happening to us? Why is it happening that this is happening in Palestine and so on? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he predicted this. He told us, يُوشَكُ الْأُمَمُ يُوشَكُ الْأُمَمُ أَن تَدَّعَ عَلَيْكُمْ كَمَا يَدَّعَ الْأَكَلَةُ إِلَىٰ قِسْعَتِهَا That it's nearly the time where the nations are going to split you apart. Just like when you're in dinner time and you're splitting apart your food. SubhanAllah. You know when you're having dinner, you eat biryani, 
I don't know, you have curry, you have this, you have that, papadum, roti, whatever you have. And you say to your friend, give me the roti. You say to them, give me the, I don't know what, the papadum. And you, you, you mixing it about like this. The Prophet told us that basically this is the way that the nations are going to be splitting the Muslims up. Just like this. So one of the Sahaba, قَالَ قَائِلٌ One of the Sahaba said, مِنْ قِلَّةٍ Is it because we were small in number? Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa listen to what he said. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, بَلْ He said, rather on that day that you will be kathir, you will be a lot. Be a lot in number. وَلَكِنَّكُمْ كَالْغُفَاءِ However, you will be like the scum, the rubbish, meaning you don't have much quality in you. You'll be scummish, you'll be rubbish. Kerufa is saili. Just like when you go to the sea and you see the foam on top, like the scum on top of the, the water, on the torrents are taking it away. The Prophet told us this. So the, the Sahaba were interested, they say, why is that the case? And the Prophet also said, Allah will take out of, listen to this, it's so amazing, wallahi. It's as if he sees what's happening today. He says, That Allah will take, that Allah will take the fear, listen to this carefully. Allah will take the fear away from the hearts of your enemies. This is very important. Not only fear, but respect. That they will lose fear and respect for you Muslims. Your enemies. They will lose fear and respect for you. And then, he said something else. He said that, that you will have in your hearts al -wahn. Now what is al wahn al wahn he asked, the Sahaba said, what is al wahn He said, Hubb dunya wa karahiyatul mawt. That when you love the dunya and you hear, you fear death. This is the hadith. The hadith is this. We as the Muslim community now, despite our numbers, despite the fact that we are lots in number, unfortunately we have not been able to punch at our weight. We have fulfilled letter by letter, line by line, word by word. The hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that hadith, that prophecy of the future exactly happened. How do we get out of this? The question now is, what is the solution? Now we've already done a prognosis. What's the solution? The solution is this, very carefully. Listen carefully. Number two, what number one, sorry. The Prophet said that the enemy will be dividing us. Right? Divide and conquer. And it's as if he was there when uh, Mark Sykes and Pico were literally in, in the early 1900s dividing the countries. And if you look at the map, there's, why is there, why is there like straight lines on the map? Because the colonizer literally put a ruler to the pen and said, this is going to be Egypt, like that. So it's, why, is, why is it like a, like a block? This is going to be, you know, this country. They did it like that. This, so the first thing is about unity. It's very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَرَّقُوا دِينَهُمْ وَكَانُوا شِيَعَ لَسْتَ مِنْهُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ Indeed, those people who divided their religion and became Shia, became different sects, and now we actually have a sect called that, funny enough, then you've got nothing to do with them. This is what Allah said to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Don't you have nothing to do with them? Anyone, and listen carefully, young people, anyone, after you become practicing in the religion of Islam, who tells you, look, this is the only right way, this is the only, this sheikh is the only sheikh that is going to bring you to Jannah. This, well, like, if anybody tells you that from any side in the spectrum, Salafi, Sufi, whoever it is, they are calling you. And they are falling into this dividing and conquer technique that's been happening from the, the beginning of the 20th century. They came to our country. They came to our countries. Literally, Lawrence of Arabia came into the Arabic lands. And he told them, look, why are, you, why are you being governed? Why are you being governed by Turkish people? And he put in their hearts, Asabiya and Qawmiya, he put in their hearts this love for nationalism and patriotism. And they put above 
their Islamic identity, their national identity, and as a result of it, the, the Ottoman Empire was basically the beginning of the end for it. So dividing and conquering has been an ancient tactic, an ancient tactic these people have been doing. Some of the brothers, help them hold the signs, please. Can you go and jump in with them, please? Help them. Let's have a nice mix of Muslims and our fellow Jewish friends. Yes, no, no, everyone... Guys, don't, don't do it because it's the Sabbath and they don't want to be filmed. There's a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Look. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Okay, so film is finding. All right, no problem. Now listen. So the first thing, what did we say? Unity. Unity, yes, upon the right principles. Take some yes, nice pictures, right. brother and sister. But that is number one. Because the Prophet told us there will come a time where you'll be divided. Meaning in order to rectify the situation, we will have to be united. That's the reality. The second thing is this. He said that you will be kehuta il sail. That you will be basically like the torrent, the rubbish, the scum of the, of the water, of the sea. So what we have to do now, in order to get the Mahiba back from the Adu, from those enemies, what we have to do is we have to build ourselves up in every single way possible. I say that honestly. Now is the time for all of our youth to think about not just contributing for themselves, the individualistic idea of I'm doing it for myself, I want to get married, I want to have a kid, that this and that, and then die. No, that whatever you choose to do in life, whether it's to go to medical school, whether it's to be an engineer, whether it's to do this or to do that, now you have to have a dual purpose in mind. A, I want to do it for myself, but B, how am I going to make this contribute to the Ummah? How am I going to make this contribute to the Muslim community? And Muslim, the Muslim, the Muslim to the Muslim is like one building. As the Prophet Muhammad said, that he puts itself together. In order to get away from what the divisive elements, we must, I say this to you, we must start rebuilding ourselves individually as families as communities and then internationally that is the only way forward we want to see islam implemented let's get it implemented in our own homes in our own backyards we need this now more than ever before because there will come a time where the victory as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says will come to us the victory will come it's not about our, a matter of if it's a matter of when but the question is the boat is going to come and go are you going to go onto the boat Meaning, are you going to start thinking in, a, in alignment with the objectives of the, of the community, the Muslim community, or are you not? Now, that's what I say to you, the Muslims now, we have to start thinking about the community. Anything you choose to do, think about one question. How can what I do contribute to the Ummah? I'm not giving you any spe specific or precise answers. You might figure that out yourself. If you want to be a doctor, if you want to be an engineer, whatever you want to do, the question you have to have in your mind now, how is what I do going to contribute to the Ummah? Believe me, the people in Palestine have been already promised victory. They have been promised that. Don't worry too much about them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, and this will be the last thing yes. that I say. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, by the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala,
To Allah belongs all of the might. And he is the all hearing, all knowing. So these people who have been killed and made shaheed, we should not be too sad about this because they are now, inshallah, in Jannah. We, are, we should be feeling sorry for ourselves because we are here being tested with being good believers in this car. And by the way, the same thing I'm sure applies. You know the struggle in a society like this. And we have to remain steadfast. And, and really, the hisab on us is going to be much more than on them. Allah has honored them to put them in that place and make them the center of the struggle in the ummah. And we, what we can do is do everything in our humanly power and possibility to give them nasr, victory, and to give ourselves nasr. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, good, oh, good, oh, good. Give it to him, brother. Yo, hijab. Give it to very interesting video i mean i i remember i reacted to a very very short video of jewish people actually protesting this um jewish state it wasn't there in the beginning why should it exist now some people would say and for some people that are saying mm, i mean that's why books are there read your history know your history so that you may then decide from there don't just see things from one point of you um like i said it's all about unity unity is what's going to make us live in a better world or what's going to create a better world at the end of the day and then this division before you think of any sort of division remember ubuntu humanity um humanity should override these borders that were created by someone that wanted to conquer divide and rule us at the end of the day those borders don't even make sense those boundaries don't make sense at the end of the day it doesn't matter whether you're coming from um uh, morocco if you're coming from brazil if you're coming from japan if you're coming from zambia we're all human beings at the end of the day that's what matters that's what matters at the end of the day forget the borders remember humanity before anything and everything at the end of the day let's put god first so that he can see through he can see through to it that humanity prevails or that we ourselves put humanity before anything else in this world big shout out to the person that suggested this if you have comments please drop them in the comment section below you want me to react to something drop the link in the comment section below and i'll be more than glad to react to it make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see my next reaction video